I am really, really curious where in the creative part of your head where that film came from because it's so different from mm -hmm, anything mm -hmm. out there right now. What is funny is that if you watch uh, Kronos, Devil's Backbone, even Hellboy and this, there is a similarity in the universes of those, but Pants is almost like the synthesis of the things that I tried, for example, in the more esoteric, more uh, uh, smaller films like Kronos and Devil's Backbone, but with the production value and the know-how and the imagery working of Hellboy or Blade or Mimic. So the, 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 the synthesis of that makes a movie that looks big budget, but that remains 13.5 million euros, which is about, I think, 20 million dollars. Mm -hmm. And it looks much bigger. So the spectacle is there, but there's also the intimacy and the madness and the uh, sort of esoteric nature of the other smaller films. Okay. So now what is it uh, about um, this particular backstory, which is, I guess, the Spanish Civil War that, that, that really interests you? Because Devil's Backbone was kind of set during that time mm -hmm. period as well. Well, both of them. Both of them uh, tried to deal with a moment. Uh, you know, the movie is all about crossroads. Mm -hmm. So the girl is in the crossroads of becoming a woman. The captain is in the crossroads of actually suffocating a rebellion. The doctor is at the crossroads of either becoming a, a hero or becoming a full coward. And each character has their own little crossroads and a moment of decision. So I thought that the period in which this story is set would illuminate the story itself as much as the anecdote. Uh, 1944 is a moment in which Spain and the whole world is at a crossroads in World War II and a uh, civil war in Spain being the resistance being very involved in World War II. The resistance trying to keep that possibility of destroying the fascist government alive. It was a very important setting. I think fantasy is 50% about the tale, 50% about the setting of the tale. Let me give you an example. If I tell you I'm going to do a vampire film, you go, oh, okay. But if I tell you, I'm going to be a vampire film, I'm going to do it in the Vatican. Then you go, oh man, I mean, uh, that sounds a little more interesting. Or I tell you, I'm going to do a story about a vampire, but he is part of the Bush cabinet. And you go, oh, I, I dig it, uh, let's hear a little more. So it, it, it really is, the context informs the tale. Okay. And then from the fairy tale side of the film, uh, it reminded me a lot more of the true fairy tales, you know, more of the Brothers Grimm kind of dark fairy tales that were meant to scare the reader, I guess, into doing the right thing, correct? Yeah, I think that uh, fairy tales have two, two basic types. One that works pro-establishment and has a morality tale and tells you as a kid, either you obey your parents or something will eat you, or don't go out at night or something will eat you. Those are almost... Uh, uh, little pamphlets for children, you know. But there is another type of fairy tale that is more anarchic and more uh, intangible, that actually just becomes almost like a spiritual parable, and an anarchic spiritual parable, whose vague power is harder to pin down. So those dark underpinnings, that dark sort of more tenuous message is the one that attracted me. I didn't want to do a fairy tale for kids that told them how to be good. I actually wanted a fairy tale that told kids how to disobey <laughs> and how important it is to be disobedient and how important it is to be your own person. So the movie is, if anything, has quite the anti-morality tale, you know, in it. Because I think in this time and place, we need to disobey more often than we need to obey blindly. Well, last question. I'm mm -hmm. going to ask you about Hellboy 2. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me that hasn't been out there yet? Well, uh, nothing <laughs> much. I mean, we are in pre-production. We are shooting in May, June. Uh, we have, I have the hopes of start casting in January, start shooting in May, June, and be out for summer 08. Oh, wow. You know, uh, by then, uh, we'll be at the end of a long, long, long road. The movie is being done again, like the first one with a bigger scale than a budget. We're looking at a huge movie and a really big budget, you know, so. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And congratulations right. on this one. Thank you, man. <laughs>